Good morning, Ernest. Welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, you've seen the process. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, we've got your written submission. Over to you how we use the 10 minutes. But uh, as I've said to other submitters, the more of it you spend talking to us, the less we will have to question you. So welcome once again. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairperson, members of the committee. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say that um, I'm an immigrant, obviously, and um, I came from an authoritarian country, having grown up in um, Taiwan and lived in three different countries. I'd like to offer a bit of a unique perspective from my point of view. There are certain parts in this bill that greatly concern me that I, th I think personally should not even be in the, in the law books of, of a Western democratic country. Um, the regeneration bill is not all about quick recovery, obviously. Um, as a member of the Quake Outcast Group, I have been deeply involved for the last four years in three court battles against the government's unlawful red zoning of the um, vast tracts of residential land in Christchurch and the subsequent unlawful buyout offers of our land and house. The June 2011 cabinet decision on the red zone um, was the turning point, uh, as I see it. The government embarked on a campaign of misinformation, intimidation, and coercion um, to try and get residents to sell their land and houses to the Crown. Well, it may very well suit some people, but I think given the full range of choices, I think a lot of people will think twice about that. But that aside, that's water under the bridge, I'd just like to say that since the Supreme Court had already ruled that the rezoning process was unlawfully made, as a resident owner within, living, still living within the residential red zone, I have had to endure years of uncertainty, years of stress and sleepless nights, having to worry about whether or not the government or even the council is gonna shut off my water, sewer and power, or exercise powers within the CIRA Act, or the next Regeneration Act to compulsorily acquire my house and my land. Now, I have upkeeps to do. I, I need to do regular maintenance and things like that too, other than just quake repairs to make my house in good standing, leak-proof, weather-proof um, order. These are not your you know, $5, $2 weekend jobs that you can decide on a whim. I, I have to sink in some serious money to do the upkeep. So do I spend the money to maintain my house or should I just let it rot and perhaps, you know, because the government might take it one day and I'm not gonna get one cent of my money back. I'm sure this same scenario, this, the same dilemma faces a lot of um, fellow red zoners that are still living in their own homes. And this upcoming new regeneration bill um, contained within a lot of new powers that, was, that, that weren't even included in the CIRA Act that allows, in particular allows the minister to decide compensation, whatever the minister thinks fit. So I, I take particular issue with that particular phrase because I think that should come out of the law book of a third world banana republic, not New Zealand. I think another part of the bill that says um, what ought to be insured uh, should not be compensated. That clearly shows muddled thinking and illogical reasoning on the part of a certain circle within the government. I mean, why does, what does it matter that whether something ought to be insured or not? And who decides what ought to be insured or what ought not to be insured? And what does it mean to be insured? What sort of insurance policy are we talking about exactly? Are we talking about fire, theft, um, other natural disasters? or some potential government taking of your private property. I'm not aware of any uh, commercially available insurance policy that one can purchase against the risk of government taking your land. So that particular subclause, 79B3, was poorly written and the intentions are unclear. I can't think of a reasonable 
um, explanation for that. And I think given the track record and the history of this government over the last three and a half years, I can, I, I can think of one good reason why it should be there. It, it's probably clearly targeted at people who are uninsured or self-insured, if you call it, um, and still remaining and owning private property in the red zone. But I hope I'm wrong. Another, another part that I have a particular problem with is the power as the powers that allows the um, chief executive and the minister to close any roads and restrict movement within the great, Greater Christchurch area, I think there is no, there's really no good reason for such extraordinary powers um, to be included in a bill that's five to ten years after the earthquakes. So this this bill, uh, this bill lasts for another five years. I, I'm correct. Am I correct? So. Ten years after the earthquake, you want to give a minister the power to close any road, restrict movement of private citizens within the whole a big chunk of Canterbury. What what good um, legitimate reason could there be? It, it's a great it's a grave infringement on our civil liberties, and I think it amounts to wartime powers. Um, in peacetime, it's just there's just no no, no reason for that. So these are great powers that are proposed to be given to the minister and the chief executive, and with great powers come great responsibility, and with great powers the, there is more opportunity for them to be misused. So I implore the committee that. Please reconsider these specific clauses that I included in my submission and ask, this, ask yourselves this question. Are these powers absolutely necessary or are there other mechanisms that by which the objectives of the government can be achieved? You have a responsibility to ensure New Zealand does not drift into the realm of a third world country by upholding the law and pass laws that are of genuine high quality. So I ask you and I implore you to, to consider and ask yourself this question. What legacy are you leaving for your children and grandchildren? And will you stand up for what matters? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ernest. You've uh, nicely timed that exactly to 10 minutes. But if there are any urgent pressing questions, no, uh, Clayton. Yep. Could I just ask you what do you uh, what do you perceive as the government's rationale for retaining the substantial powers it has in the legislation and its unwillingness to subs to share or transfer <laughs> substantial powers to the community at large? If you what do you believe the motivation is? For them? Well, I can only guess that the government wants great powers to do whatever it feels like. And um, given the track record, and given the, the stress and, and hardship that I and others in my group have endured, I think there's a sense of wanting to tidy things up and tie up loose ends and not wanting to lose face, perhaps. Do you believe we have sufficient um, people of skill in this province if those powers were transferred wholly or partly to, uh, to execute and manage those powers for the, uh, the benefit of our community? Absolutely. There's smart people everywhere and people who are, who are community-minded and selfless. And we just need to make sure that we find a mechanism to find these folks. Thank you. Um, I think the... It has to be very quick. Um, just in terms of your concern about the minister having the power to determine whatever amount of compensation uh, he or she sees fit, is that partly based on the Quake Outcast case or cases and the um, the minister's the arbitrariness in terms of determining the um, compensation that would be paid in the residential red zone for vacant and uninsured land? Well, I can't speak for the minister, but I but I can say that this is a great great departure from the principles of Magna Carta, as in our Western um, 
legal and democratic basis. So, yeah, it, it doesn't belong. It's out of place. It's very odd. It should not even be in a, mm. in a law book at all. Thank you. Ernest, on that note, we're going to have to finish. So thank you very much for thank your you. written and uh, oral presentation today. Thank you. Appreciate it greatly. Can I call to the table, please, uh, Representative